Hi, and welcome to Seriously Pointless Conversations About Culture, your Seriously Pointless podcast about all your nerdy and geeky things throughout time in the nightmarish dreamscape. My name is David, and I am again joined by James. How you doing, James? Doing very well. How are you? Good, doing good. And we are joined by a special guest, Mike, from Not Your Father's Movies podcast. Mike, how you doing, man? I'm doing great. I'm doing great. It's get, great to see you again, David, and great to finally meet you, James. It's, uh, I've I, heard your voice. Likewise over the last year many times and it's great to see your face i know he's his so. just just warm and doesn't he seem huggable mike wouldn't oh you say gosh, huggable yeah. i would Absolutely. say <laughs> I, do, I do have to ask mike since it's not your father's podcast what is your father's podcast oh well i mean it may be seriously pointless conversations about culture i don't know <laughs> i know it's that's great segue james phenomenal you're you're just you're just great so but no if you might if you guys might recognize that podcast i actually had a chance to have a uh, uh, veto on a previous podcast where we talked about hellboy and actually had uh jesse on a pre- another previous conversation or another conversation with me uh when we talked about settlers of Catan. so i finally i missed the settlers of Catan episode too i'm still i told you about this and you're like i have to work david and i'm like well that's a poor excuse for anything um work um <laughs> sounds well, like your priorities are, are misaligned there I, I know I, and they really were they really were and the funny thing was i didn't realize i forgot about this and i wrote my own script for a settlers of Catan podcast episode not realizing david had already done one <laughs> this is why i send messages to you and you just ignore them like everyone else <laughs> i read them all i just can't promise that i remember them <laughs> Ah, uh, that ADD is <laughs> kicking in for sure. So, um, Thanks so, no one. <laughs> so luckily we've got Mike finally on the podcast. We have completed the tripod and, and we have the trifecta as, as you would. Um, so Mike, I know everybody else has uh, kind of shilled the podcast on here a little bit. Tell us, give us your, give us your spiel on it. Um, uh, and what you guys are, 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 are going over this week on your guys' side of the, uh, the pond. Yeah. Yeah. I'm excited to shill here. Um, so over at Not Your Father's Movies, we are talking about movies uh, as dads. Each one of us has, you know, a couple of kids at least. And we um, we remember growing up with movies and how important they were for us. Uh, we spent a lot of time in college together talking about movies and decided that since we did that, we should record them because the quality was that good. Um the uh, so the goal of the movie or, or of the podcast is to kind of figure out what the new dad canon is because when you say like hey you know dad movies everyone says like oh yeah you know like Armageddon or something like that or they think of Star Wars or, or <laughs> things like that that's true those are definitely great movies and we've talked about them they're definitely like dad movies for sure but there's a lot of great movies that have come out um, over the years that we consider important to us um, things that we want to pass on to our children or things that have impacted us a lot as people. Um, and so we're, uh, we're trying to define what those are and, and come up with a, a new canon of dad movies. So the most recent one that we've did, and, and this is definitely your father's movie is uh, groundhog day. We okay. started off a, a full uh, four episode long series on time loop romance movies. Um, so we're doing Groundhog Day this week. Next week, we've got About Time, and we've got some other good ones coming up from there. Um, so, yeah, check yeah, it out. It's, it's, it's really good. So I, uh, I have to say, I have not gotten a chance to listen to the Groundhog, one, Groundhog Day one yet. Uh, it's actually on my, my uh, backlog right now. But I will have to say I have thoroughly enjoyed your Maximum Cage series with Connor, <laughs> which is yes. one of my favorite, like, awful 90s movies ever. I say awful, but at the same time, it's so bad, it's good. <laughs> so, um, and then on top of that, they recently, guys, they recently did the Dark Knight trilogy by uh, that had uh, Christian Bale mm. and uh, Christopher Nolan in it phenomenal like just like analysis of it guys i'm gonna be honest with you i I had a blast listening to you guys because there was definitely some some contention in there of which one of those three was the best so i i I had a blast Mm. with it so if you guys have not gotten a chance to go check them out like i said it is not your father's movies uh podcast and like i said they have a whole litany of things they're a lot more regular than we are they come out once a week so i got plenty of material to go out there and, and, and peruse guys 
So yeah, There's go check them out. Stuff up there. And you came on, I feel like it was about a year ago now to do oh, yeah. Hellboy 2. Yep. Hellboy I 2. Came, yeah, came out on a, came out for Hellboy 2, the Golden Army, which was that was that one of your picks? Was that for your birthday round? I can't remember. I think it was for Je- well, Jesse, uh Jesse has both Jesse and Vito hold Hellboy 2 like closely. Uh, as you do as well. Yep. And it was kind of a new, I'd seen Hellboy like years ago, but Hellboy 2, I'd never come across. And so it was a ton of fun to encounter that and watch yeah, that and have you on to talk about it. Oh, yeah, dude. Yeah, I had a blast with that. Like I said, because that was just, that, that jumped right off of like the conversation that Vito and I had whenever it was literally like two and a half hours of us just, you know, going over Hellboy stuff. And I was just <laughs> like, okay, I like this format, but I was like, that was one of the early episodes. I'm like, we're going to have to cut this down just a little bit because this, <laughs> My wife's like, you're spending like two hours talking to people. And I'm like, what are these worst things we could be doing? I'm like, you know, <laughs> podcasts or hookers and below, your choice. You know, it's just, you know. One or the those, other. <laughs> yeah, those the, the just straight down the line. Those are the only two options we have. <laughs> and so I always say that to her and she just, you know, you know, the patented eye roll and look at the wives give us to like, you're being stupid right now. Stop talking. <laughs> like, okay. Oh, yeah. I live for those. <laughs> those eye rolls absolutely those are the still the best ones so <laughs> all right guys so that's that's a little bit of our introduction so th- now you guys know the format uh we, after we've kind of introduced everybody we get into kind of what we've been watching what we've been playing what we've been ingesting in the last you know uh months since you guys have seen us um james do you want to go first so v or uh so that uh, mike can kind of get his uh uh his his, his uh brain moving about what he's sure. been up to yeah but most recently finished up Pokemon Legends Arceus. I got Arceus. I, I know. I was there. You, know, you helped you helped me find all the little purple wisp things, which was a <laughs> colossal pain in the butt. And I am still so pissed that they made that a mainline story quest. But I got it. I caught Arceus. It's a fun game. It's I think it's gonna be a prototype for the new one that they just announced on Pokemon Day. Yep. Uh, there's a clear kind of progression from Sword and Shield to what they did in Legends Arceus and what's probably gonna be in the next one. Absolutely. It's a lot of fun. If you haven't checked it out, it's cool. It, it's open yeah. world. It's got some Monster Hunter vibes on some of the boss fights, even though they're kind of clunky. But yeah, well, what what can you expect, honestly, from a Nintendo Switch game? I mean, honestly, I'm just sounds... glad that there's animations for all the moves this time around. Sword and Shield was kind of a disaster for that. <laughs> They were like entire cutscenes that weren't even rendered. But that that game felt so rushed. But this one feels like a nice mid step, like you were saying. So it's a I'm really, yeah, I'm I'm very excited to see what the new one, which we're going to talk about that a little bit later, when the new mm-hmm. Pokemon game that they announced. How I've also played yeah, about three hours of Elden of Elden Ring now. Oh, uh, you have joined the amazing. masses. It is amazing so far. <laughs> it is definitely like a Souls game. I mean, it's it's from software. They do one type of game really well. I'm enjoying the setting. It's a lot brighter in a lot of places than Souls are. I think the combat system flows a little smoother. They took a lot of the stuff from Sekiro and brought it in. Good. And I just killed a dragon, so I'm pretty happy with how things have gone so <laughs> Oh, far. man. Dude, you were just like <laughs> Cloud9 right now, right? Just phenomenal. <laughs> Should I call you James Sir James? Dragon Slayer. Yeah. Dragon James? Slayer. Sir James the Dragon Slayer. I like it. I like That's it. Right. That's right. That's right. <laughs> All right. So, um, have you been watching anything, James? I know you said you were you were playing a couple games. Have you been, any any new oh, anime at all? I've been watching some of the stuff coming out. Uh, there's a new Demon Slayer season, which is phenomenal. Yep. It's the Entertainment District art, <coughs> um, and it features the main characters dressing in drag and pretending to be geishas, which is always fun. Well, you know, to be fair, Final Fantasy did it. Final Fantasy VII did it. So, what's wrong with that, right? I mean, it kind of has come along. Um, I don't know. One that was good that you might not check out otherwise. Uh, My Dress Up Darling is actually pretty good. Okay. It's about a girl who wants to be a cosplayer, and there is a boy who makes Hinata dolls, and he becomes like the uh, seamstress, or the, like the tailor for her. Some. And it's... Sounds like Kelly picked this one out. Did you pick this one out? Kelly did pick this one out, but <laughs> I was surprised how good it actually is. <laughs> okay. This might be something I watch with my wife. So we'll uh, with Jackie. So we'll see. Cause she's been kind of, <laughs> we've been kind of sitting back and I'm not really watching a ton of anime. Cause we haven't had a lot of time. And I told her like, that's a perfect like amount of time, like 20, 25 minutes. Like that's great. So we'll just have it's to kind nice. of sit down. It's and- nice. So, well, you should watch the uh, the King one with her if you haven't already. So I've tried getting her to watch it, but right now she's just hooked on other things. So it's trying to get her to watch something 
you know, that's, that's not interesting in her, just kind of hard. So, but Fair enough. it is what it is when you're at the end of the day, kind of, you all know how it is. Like when you go towards the end of your day, it's just like, I got 45 minutes to fall before I fall asleep, that the kids are not around and like, let's just watch something. So, <laughs> but yeah. So, but talking about stuff, we've been watching, Mike, what have, what have you been watching and adjusting and, uh, and enjoying say, so to say? Yeah. Yeah. Um, so obviously I just recently watched Groundhog Day. Um, but, uh, <laughs> Other than the movies that we're doing for the podcast, uh, I just watched last night. I just watched um, Nightmare Alley. So we're we're working. Yeah. Through, I'm working through all of the uh, all the Oscar nominees right now. And man, it's kind of a weird Oscar season this year uh, in general. Um, but I was kind of putting off watching Nightmare Alley because I was like, man, this is a two and a half hour long movie by Guillermo del Toro. Like this yeah. is going to be at best hefty. You know, yeah. and it's been yeah. getting sort of mixed reviews in general uh, from, you know, between people I know and like critics and stuff. But I dug it, man. It was a lot of fun as much as you can say it's fun. It was fun. Um, yeah. That was a yeah, that's I, I'm definitely recommending that. I mean, it's it's dark and like it's. Oh, yeah. Uh, it is no. a oh, yeah. adult. horror film. It's definitely yeah. not a happy ending movie. If you go into that movie expecting like, oh, it's going to be happy with a title called a Nightmare Alley, and then I've actually watched it. I oh, I yeah. totally enjoyed it. I totally yeah. enjoyed it. The problem, though, with Guillermo del Toro is he kind of really, he kind of telegraphs things a little bit too much, like oh, yeah. halfway through the movie. I'm like, you, well, you kind of saw that. I was like, I already know how, how this is going to end. Unfortunately, I was just like, but I just, I still wanted to see where he gets there. I want to see oh, yeah. the, 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 uh, the road that he takes to get there. And it, and it was all worth it. But on top of it, I love, uh, I love Bradley Cooper as an actor. Uh, oh, yeah. so he, he was phenomenal on this. So. I mean, it was full of fantastic actors, just great people doing great, like having fun, like doing oh, yeah. a great job. It was, yeah. And even though like you knew it was going to happen at the end. Yeah. Like it, it, like you said, it, it was just it was so much fun to be along for the ride and to uh, to it, it, like you kind of wanted it. It was kind of pulpy. It was like reading, you know, reading like a detective novel or something. Like oh that. yeah, Super. definitely, definitely had that kind of like like uh, pulp noir feel to it, which I I enjoyed quite a bit. So, but yeah, that's 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 a great pull. So like I said, if anybody uh, if anybody hasn't seen it yet, I think it's actually free on HBO Max right now. I think it is. It is. Yeah. Yeah. So if you guys haven't seen it, check it out. Have you been have you been watching anything else or playing anything at all or ingesting anything at all? Um, well, like I've that? been playing uh, with video games. I've been playing. So over the last like few years, I've been catching up on the uh, the Arkham Knight games or the mm -hmm. Batman Arkham games. And I'm in the middle of Arkham Origins right now, uh, which is so I haven't played I haven't played Arkham Knight yet. Arkham Origins, I don't know, someone on Reddit at some point like said, like, <laughs> hey, you should play Origins before you play Arkham Knight. I don't know why, but um, it is, I don't know, it's interesting, it's fun. <laughs> like, the mechanics are easier or, or better yeah. than the first couple of games at this point are, which is which is neat. And it's fun to kind of doing, like, a, a villain, a, a rogues gallery with, yeah. uh, with Arkham Orange, or Origins. Yeah, I really, I really enjoyed the the like you said the the character cast and organs a little bit more than the previous ones, um, but for some reason I loved Arkham City. Like that was oh, just yeah. far and above the best out of all four of them. Well, see the thing though is like that that uh, that last one I believe it's it's not by Rocksteady. It's a different company. Oh, I got a hold right. of it. Yeah. Yeah, so yeah. you kind of get a uh, a different feel. They took the architecture and the game engine and everything, and it's still very much a rock steady game. But they kind of put their own flavoring on it, so hmm. it is different in a way. And I think I won't want to say they dropped the ball. I want to say they they could have done better. And it's not obviously it's not rock steady, but. But yeah. it, it is still fun. I enjoyed it enough that I I've bought it twice. <laughs> so. You bought it twice. <laughs> yeah, I'm always amazed, like going into these games, how like I know what the loop's going to be, right? Like I know yeah. it's going to get me like going after those Riddler tokens and like doing these things. I'm going to go on these, like just going and getting it. I'm always amazed at how easily it gets me into it. I'm just like, oh, you know what? This one was easier than I thought it was. Like figuring this thing out. And so like maybe I'll go do the next one. And I keep doing the next one. 
next one. <laughs> very, very enjoyable. It just got to get you hooked, and it just goes yeah. and goes and goes. And with like, like, was it like? Uh, I think it's like, it's like, like three hundred like Riddler tokens. It's ridiculous. Oh, they just up it every single game. Like the first game, I was like. Get all fifty Riddler tokens, and I'm like, this is gonna. And I'm like, this is hard. And then like the next game, they're like, okay, we put 150 in them now because you assholes made it thought it was too easy. So here's some more. And then the next one, they're like, we put 300 in them now. And I'm like, well, this isn't fun anymore. This is just a chore. So I mean, Breath of the Wild had 800 correct seeds. So yeah, nothing, go, no, so. nothing on Breath of the Wild. Yeah, vanity. Yeah, I, I totally could not. You know, it could not do that at all. So I tried, but well. That's that, I'm glad that you guys have uh, kind of uh, given us an insight of what you guys have been up to. So in my corner, um, like I was saying earlier, I have not had a lot of time to kind of sit down and, and play and watch a whole bunch of stuff other than what I've had with my wife. Um, but on my own time, the, the little brief time that I have been had to watch, um, I actually let me pull it up because I'm trying to remember what it was. Um, I play, I watched, uh, I've been on HBO a lot. Uh, I'll be honest with you. I watched uh, Raised by Wolves. I don't know. Have you, have you seen this yet? It's really good. So it's um, that one is, uh, gosh, dang it. What is his name? He did the alien movies. Um, having a brain fart here. Like James massive. Cameron? Jim Cameron. So he, he is uh, an executive producer on it. Um, and he really pushed for the series to be made. Um, it's a different gentleman that actually like. Aaron Guzikowski. Yeah. He wrote the series um, and it's phenomenal. It's it's got that weird like that weird James uh, James Cameron vibe to it, but it's it's phenomenal. It's basically like Earth has been destroyed uh, by all these religious factions, basically infighting, and to get away from that, they send like you know uh, I guess you would call them colony ships away because they have like hyperlight travel at that time, and these androids are kind of in charge of one little crew. And they, they land on a planet and all this weird shit starts happening, to, mm. to say the least. So that sounds great. Um, and it's it's great. Yeah, it's it's phenomenal, but it's definitely got that James Cameron vibe to it. The other thing I've been playing, I've been watching, um, is uh it's called uh what's it? Uh, what was it? Uh Our Flag Means Death. Have you seen this yet? It's no. by uh the oh. same Yeah, it, it's the Ta- same guys that did yes, yeah, the same guys, yeah, Taika Waititi did it. He is, uh, I think he's helping uh, write it and exec- and produce it, but he's not like directing. He's the same guys that did What We Do in the Shadows. Okay. Um, so I have high hopes because I love What We Do in the Shadows. That is like my favorite. Like the movie's great, but the TV show is like head and really? shoulders above. I, I like the TV show way better than the movie. I got to check it out, man. It's, I mean, the movie's great. hilarious. The, yeah. The, yeah, the you can get the the TV show on what we do in the shadows is on uh, Hulu, I think only. But it's great. It's I'm just going to point this, say this out right now. Um, uh, 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 Rob, or is it Robert Collins or, Ro- or what is his name? Colin Roberts. He's a he's a, he's an energy vampire that's on there. He's the best part of the show for me because his whole thing is he sucks the life energy out of people by like boring them to death. That's all I'm going to say. <laughs> it's great. I have never laughed so hard in my life, but it's, it's, it's good stuff. Um, but yeah, you guys haven't seen that good. Go check out definitely those two. Um, and on top of my, uh, my flag means death, but yeah, that's what I've been doing. Having had a lot of time to play games though. So fingers crossed, I'm going to try and get a little bit done on, on Sunday. We'll, we'll see though. Maybe you maybe get back into a little bit of, um, what was I playing? I was playing Halo Infinite a while ago on my oh. off week, so I'm gonna try and get that campaign started. But but yeah, that's uh unless anybody else has anything else to add, nothing else, nothing nothing that piqued your fancy that you forgot about. Okay, cool. Let's get into the news, guys. Um, so starting off, uh, James James is having his heart broken. By Funimation, they 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 stabbed him in the back. Yeah, Funimation have had like this off and on relationship with Crunchyroll for a long time. Yeah, like for a while there, they were sharing each other's content libraries, and like Crunchyroll was going to be the sub, and Funimation was going to be the dub, and they were going to share titles, and that stopped after like six months, and now they put up this big notice that all the Funimation content is going to Crunchyroll streaming yep. platform. That's it. Yeah. So, so, so after after so apparently Crunchyroll. Has said they're they're just straight out 
purchasing uh, Funimation. They're just like, we're taking Which, them all. I want to know if my VRV subscription will get me all that, and I don't need a Crunchyroll subscription. That's kind of what I was wondering, too. I figured if you, depending on how long you've paid for it, I think they would just merge the two. I, I'm sure you'll have to go in and make a Crunchyroll account, but they're like, they'll merge it over probably. Maybe. So, I mean, I'm clearly going to have to get a Crunchyroll account now. I've just kind of been sitting on it the last few weeks because I wanted to see like if it actually happens or if it just dies. I don't think it will. Apparently, like from, from everything I've gathered, uh, the uh, uh, Japanese government has approved it. They're not, they're not saying no to it. Um, because that's where it's all based out of. So as, as far as I know, I, I, they're looking at and moving it all over. So the, the big reason this is so, the reason this is so big, everybody, if you guys haven't got into it and, and Mike too, is that, um, so there's two types of anime that, uh, that they basically push out. They have subtitled anime, which is like traditional Japanese and it's all subtitles and they have dubs, which they dub over it in English. Um, Crunchyroll primarily focuses in more of uh, uh, subtitled anime, mainly, and then Funimation is mainly they 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 have the higher quality dubbed, and they get it out a lot faster. They do like what they call simulcast, and so they can literally watch it like same day or like next day, essentially. Yeah, back so in the day, the dubs were very poor quality. Like they had yes. bad voice actors, they had yes. bad translations, and very bad. A lot of people feel very strongly about watching only dubbed, only subtitled anime because the dubs aren't real. That being said, the dub quality in the last 10 years has gone way up. The voice actors yep. are really good. The translations are high quality. And I really think that subtitles are probably going to go the way of the Dodo at some point. Which, actually, that's kind of bringing that up a little once bit. Once the hardcore you know, fans from the 80s and 90s start to move on, I think uh, subs, sorry, the dubs are going to be where it's at. <laughs> You mean pass away, James, is what you're trying to say? <laughs> uh, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> maybe. Well, you know, maybe. Maybe, like I said, maybe they move on. But actually, uh, talking about that, you, getting on your Funimation account, is, and since in the last few years, because I've really kind of gotten back into anime in the last few years with you, especially James, I've noticed that quality has gone up. So I've actually kind of made the shift from subtitles to dubs a little mm-hmm. bit more because I kind of enjoyed a little. I enjoyed a little bit more. That's just me thing. I don't know. But every once in a while, I will, you'll run across something like you said with that, that still has subtitles on it and doesn't have the dub yet, or it's going to be a while and I'll watch it in the subs and I do still enjoy it, but mm-hmm. it's still, I have to pay attention a lot, lot more than I used to. So it's just like yeah. anything with that. So. And, that's, and that's one of the reasons I switched over is it's just, it's a lot more work to try and read and watch the screens at the same time. Yeah. And with the, with the animation quality going up, it's more of a shame not to watch the screen than it used to be. <laughs> no, absolutely. I, I would totally understand. I agree with that. So just for anybody's uh, information, uh, if you have a Crunchyroll account and you didn't have a Funimation account, you will be having all the fun things coming to you involving uh, some of the, the big, the big, big anime. You have Attack on Titan, uh, Junior High, which is coming, uh, the Black Clover series, Cowboy Bebop, uh, Darling in the Franks, Dr. Stone, Fire Force, Fruits Basket, Hunter x Hunter, My Hero Academia, uh, Scarlet Nexus, Skate, The Infinity, which is a weird sports genre anime, yeah. which I, I've never been able to get into. Yeah, so. that one. <laughs> yeah. Uh, still, the time some, I, of, some of the who's who of the last five years, for sure. Is yeah, there. definitely <laughs> quite a few are coming in there. So um, I believe they said it's uh, – so reading on here, it's, it looks like this next spring season – so maybe um, not this year, but 2023. I think that's that, that's what they're they're looking at. So they're going to start putting uh, doing that migration over uh, from Funimation into Crunchyroll. So you'll you'll see a few more here uh, in in coming. So we'll it see. might be nice though because the Funimation app is hot garbage. It's really poorly programmed. Yeah, so. yeah. It, I definitely have an issue whenever I try to do, like jump. <laughs> You don't jump, you know, from episode to episode. But then again, that might be a thing that I, since I'm, I'm I'm jumping on your 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 account, it might be that might be the no, issue. No, it's more it's just it's just the app. It's it's hot garbage. <laughs> it's yeah, you know. Well, maybe we, maybe we can fix that on the long long run, James. What do you think? So we'll see. Uh, yeah, Mike, do you have anything to add for our our weeb corner while we're here? <laughs> well, I, I'm curious. Uh, with so like, I don't, I don't, I don't watch anime, guys. I'm sorry. Um, but, uh, I do like, um, like, uh, foreign films or whatever, like yeah. movies that are in 
other languages. Um, and I cannot do overdub at all with those. I have to use subtitles. <laughs> like I can't. I can't do it. Mm-hmm. Um, how do you how do you feel about like live action stuff? Do you do uh, dub or sub? Or does it for depend? a live action? I would do sub, but yep. that's mostly okay. because of it's impossible to get the lip syncing even approaching yeah. right, and it's just so jarring yeah. that I that drives me insane. Like if it's like yeah, live action stuff, I have to have the subtitles yeah. as well. It's just yeah, and, and oh also my, my wife, my wife would kill me if I watched a foreign <laughs> a live action foreign film and it wasn't like subtitled with its native language. I'm in missing, it, like if that. you were to like watch Pan's Labyrinth in English, she might just divorce you. <laughs> She probably would. Yeah. And if it wasn't in its native Spanish, I would definitely be sleeping on the couch at the very minimum. So, yeah. It, that was That's another really good Guillermo del Toro movie. Actually. Oh, yeah. Nice. Good pull. Yeah. Um, yeah. That's awesome. Uh, so, I I we um, I watched The Raid 2 recently. Have you guys seen The Raid and The Raid 2? No, I haven't I seen that one. So. Oh, those are awesome. Just like action movies. Okay. Um, but, but every once in a while, like the account that I'm on it has like uh, – Overdub turned on rather than subtitle. <laughs> yeah. But with the raid, like the raid two, it was almost impossible to find a sub version. It was all overdub. And I oh. finally went down some weird internet corner to find it, and it was like it was the worst thing ever. If you haven't, seen it, <laughs> I can't. And that's that's how that story ends. It was just the worst thing ever. Yeah. So. Well, it happens. You know, like I said, I've definitely run into those corners too. Like like yeah. you said, when you're trying to find something that's just not out on like a streaming service yet, oh, yeah. and you're just like. Let's be honest with you. We've all gone to those dark corners of the internet trying to find stuff. <laughs> and you're like, it's a shaky camera. And there's obviously it's like got like really bad, like dubbed over, like either like Japanese or, or yeah, yeah. like even like maybe, I don't know, some random foreign language over it, but it's got Americans like English yeah. subtitles. And I'm just oh, like, no. Oh God, I'm like, I'm going to, I'm going to go away from this so fast. It's not or, even funny. I mean, even I'm if you have you're to purge like my computer after cartoons, like have you ever tried to find Freakazoid before it went up on VRV? No, um, no, no. It actually, was, it was impossible to find. It's like it's practically lost media. Oh my god! But what, what were you saying, Mike? Sorry, I missed you. No, no, no. Uh, I, I don't remember. <laughs> <laughs> it's all good. It's all good. No, yeah, no. It's if, it, like I said, for anybody that out there that hasn't really jumped into those those dark corners of the internet, it's really fun to try to find really, really bad dubs of things. Sometimes it's it's just <laughs> phenomenal. So. All right, so putting the subtitle uh, 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 argument to rest, let's go to our next uh, big one, which James has already kind of touched on this just a little Mm -hmm. bit. Uh, Elden Ring has just made massive waves. James is one of millions of thronged players that have gone to this uh, game in the last, you know, in the last, you know, say what? It came out last month, didn't it? It's a beautiful open world game, and I'm a sucker for an open world game with just a really open, you can do whatever the heck you want, whenever you want to. Yep. And then you made it a Dark Souls game. So, I mean, what's not to love? No, absolutely. So, this is a this is From Software's uh, big game that they've been working on for probably the last three to four years, probably. Also, George uh, R. R. Martin's latest excuse not to release a book. Right. Don't get me started on this crap. <laughs> because... <laughs> That man, yeah, he might have had his pinky finger in that in that in that writing. Don't get me wrong, James. He totally could have been doing both at the same time. I'm just I'm saying sure. that it was it was interesting. There was a, a press release where like Stephen King, which yeah, I'm, I'm on Stephen King's where we're we'll talking about him today, and George R. <laughs> R. Martin were George R. R. Martin were sitting at the same table and they're I was talking about how their writing process is. Stephen King said that well he writes his, you know, three pages or ten pages a day every day. And that's how he makes his books. And George R. R. Martin was sitting there like, oh, man, I can't do that. You know, how do you do that every day? Do you ever just, you know, have writer's block and not able to write? And Stephen King's like, no, I usually get my pages out. <laughs> it's because <laughs> Stephen King had that Peruvian marching powder for years. That's what he had. Yeah, I mean, it, it helps. <laughs> he had the, had the sniffles, <laughs> so to speak. So, but yeah, so this 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 wonderful game. I don't know. Uh, we kind of talked about it a little bit earlier, but yeah, it 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 definitely melds that wonderful demon uh, uh, soul, the, the Dark Souls, and um, what's the word I'm looking for? Open world environment, Sekiro kind of. Well, uh, and there's mechanics, a right. There's an interesting combination of like this huge open world map, and there's overworld bosses. Lots of enemies, but there's still some dungeon areas where you go down and it's more like a traditional Dark Souls type dungeon where yeah. it's a very linear progression with traps and everything else. 
Yeah. And I'm at, I am just barely tipping my tippy toe in the water so far, just getting started, but I'm enjoying it immensely. No, oh, yeah. So like I said, say, uh, Mike, you might actually like, I don't know if you've played it in the, any of the soul, dark souls games, but being an open world game is very similar to like, uh, Arkham, the Arkham games. A little oh yeah. Bit, so yeah, I'm, I, I dig open world games. It just takes me like a year to finish them. So <laughs> no, ab- no, absolutely. <laughs> Yeah, being being as we all have families and uh, like adult jobs and whatnot, it, yeah, yeah, I understand completely. I'm interested to see how long it takes me to get done with uh, Halo Infinite. I'm I am putting an estimate on it about four to five months, probably. So. Well, the, the name would suggest that you won't finish it, but <laughs> thank you, thank you for the dad joke, James. Thank you, thank you for this. <laughs> but yeah, I don't know. I didn't know if you. Uh, it's definitely unforgiving. I don't know if you played any Dark Souls games, Mike, or not. But it's, I, it's... Had for, I had forgotten how bad it is, where like the basic enemy hits you, and then you're stunned, and then you're dead. Yeah, it's yeah. Uh, it's, 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 it's it's pretty it's, rough. It's but no, I'm rough sorry. To get back into it. Yeah, I'm sorry, Mike. Did you did you you haven't played any? You said I, I have dipped my toes in, but um, got immediately destroyed and was like, I just want to have fun tonight. <laughs> <laughs> Why can't I, why can't Mr. Skeleton just get along with me? Why can't we be friends? Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Uh, he just, he um, just So so what what's the uh how how does the game like what's the stepping off point for the game? Like what's the so you're like a tarnished or something? A tarnished, yeah. which is pretty much the same yeah. thing as like the undead characters from Dark Souls, but you're like a tarnished, you're like some previous hero of legend who didn't quite die. There's a usual kind of story about how there was a great kingdom at one point that's fallen, and uh, you spawn into this dungeon or something, and then you promptly have a scripted death against this horrifically overpowered creature. I'm sure there's somebody who beat it with the starting gear, but it was definitely not me. <laughs> Overachievers. That's who, that's who beat it. <laughs> and then you have a vision of a mysterious lady, and then you're like in this starting cave. There's a very brief tutorial where it's about 10 minutes of like walking through a couple of scripted encounters and then you just crawl out of the cave and you're just there. And they're like, and you can literally just go anywhere. Like and immediately the, the starting, you can go, you can go to the end boss. If you want, you could go straight to the boss. The, the starting area is peppered with some of your core mechanics, like a crafting system and like your, your mount and stuff like that. But you don't have to stop there. I gather there are some bosses you're supposed to, you have to kill to progress the story, but yeah, I mean, you can just get on your horse and go. And yep, cool. lots of people have started posting guides about how to, you know, break the game and skip to certain areas. And I'm just trying oh, yeah. to go. I'm trying to go in as as raw as I can. So I don't want to <laughs> don't want to spoil the experience. Oh yeah, it it, it looks super fun. Like I said, I, I want to kind of dip my toe into it. But like I said, I'm I'm kind of in the same boat as Mike is, and I'm like. If I start this, it's going to take me a year to finish it because I have no <laughs> downtime except like super late at night when all the kids are asleep. And then it's like, do I spend time by myself playing video games or do I try to sp- like spend time with my wife where we watch something and kind of relax together? It's just like, do I want to risk the ire of the of the miss- misses or, you know, like what, what do we go with from there? You know, kind of that kind of thing. So. <laughs> But yeah, that's it, it. It looks fun, guys. Like I said, it, and hopefully, you know, like we were saying, if you guys are out there uh, playing Elden Ring, let us know what you're liking about it because I know this this game has just overshadowed everything else. Like it, it kicked yeah. Horizon Zero Dawn, or I'm sorry, Horizon uh, Forbidden West out of the out of. Don't even know the name. <laughs> it's like. <laughs> It, it, it's just nothing else matters at this point in the last because mm-hmm. it came out like three weeks ago and people are still talking about it. Something it's ridiculous. Like, that, yeah. like, I don't know. Let me look it up real quick, James. But I think the concurrent. Um, I want to see what the uh, what Steam. It's, uh, it's outrageous. It's outrageous. Uh, players by game here. It's it's ridiculous. Yeah. Okay. Elden Ring right now. Uh, top games. Concurrent players for Elden Ring. There are currently four thousand nine hundred and four thousand four hundred ninety-eight thousand and sixty-one players, with a peak players uh, at nine hundred and fifty-two thousand five hundred twenty-three playing. Uh, a million simultaneous, a million simultaneous in the, players in the <laughs> last thirty days, and they don't even have thirty days on it. They only have. <laughs> A month. 
It came out on the 16th, and they don't have a full month yet. And yeah, they have it for uh, and up to the 6th. Yeah, so we that's just started ridiculous. We've, we've got a game of the year contender already. So oh god, it's totally gonna win game of the year. That's I don't I don't see. It's got a pretty some, good shot. We'll see something that. else has gonna have to do to incredibly wear it well to blow it out of the water. But yeah, yeah. It, it'll be it'll be fun to see what what uh, tries to go in and throw its hat in the ring on that. So. But yeah, so and Mike, do you have anything to add? I know we're kind of. Uh, <laughs> We're meandering. <laughs> yeah, we're meandering, and we're kind of uh, going, you know, you know, nerdy Game Boys uh, for a little bit. <laughs> so. No, no, I, I've been uh, fascinated by Elden Ring. Like Vito, Vito, and I are texting back and forth about whether or not we should buy it and play it, and we're both like, we don't have any time uh, to do this because we've got all these other games that we've bought and not played. So, uh, <laughs> should, should just, we get it? Yeah. Yeah, you get just, just, yeah, just yeah, you get it. Yeah, you blow the yeah. money on it, pay the sixty dollars, and let it sit on your shelf for the next, you know, two years, like I do with everything else I buy. So, so. it feels good. It's like you're paying for the experience, right? So. Exactly. You know, <laughs> it's kind of like I bought uh, J R. No, it wasn't James. I got uh, one of my buddies I work with. Uh, well, I used to work with. He got me to buy Kingdom Hearts three because he's like, it's great, it's great, it's great. Because I like, I liked other ones, and I was just like, well, I, it I bought is not great. <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, I haven't even played it yet, so I don't know if it's great or not. So it, it's what that blow, that's what blow, it's blowing my mind right now. So it's just like everything else, man. It just sits on your shelf, and that back catalog just grows and grows and grows. <laughs> Much like your movies, right? It's just, it's never oh, yeah. ending. <laughs> I've got lists of my lists. <laughs> exactly. All right, so that is the wrap-up of Elden Ring. So uh, we've got a couple more stories for you guys, and then we're going to hit into our main segment of the show. Um like we were saying earlier, James uh, briefly touched on the Pokemon series um, and actually said that they, Pokemon uh, had announced it. So that one was actually uh, spearheaded by a sub-company of Game Freak, which is the big Pokemon uh, company that usually works with Nintendo. Um, Game Freak actually announced that they've got Pokemon Scarlet and Violet coming, uh, which is going to be the successor to... Um, uh, I'm going to... Uh, Pokemon Legends Arceus. Yeah, I'm going to say that correctly, yeah. hopefully. See, I'm awful about the names. That's why James is here usually. So especially yeah. when we do anime episodes, he totally has the pronunciation down. And I'm just like, blah, 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 blah. And I'm like, I'm going to take the f- yeah. hand sign, the fist out of my mouth because I just, yeah, it's awful. But it was a it was a surprise announcement on Pokemon Day. I don't think anyone was really expecting it on their mainline No, not year. at all. And uh, they... They uh, showed off the three starter Pokemon, which are, of course, ridiculously cute, like usual. Absolutely. And they're pitching it as a big open world like Arceus. And I'm hoping they include some of the non-combat catching mechanics, because that was one of the strong points of that game. And it's very interesting. I think it's going to be good. I, I'm I'm really looking forward to it as well, just because I didn't get a chance to get into Arceus at all. Um, but... Like I said, I, I when I when I saw the gameplay for it, I was like, "Oh, this is definitely just a stepping stone." For this being logical, like next step in the mm-hmm. Pokemon game evolution, I'm super excited about it. Um, and like you said, the, the super cute like uh, 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 starter Pokemon you have the grass type cat uh, Sprigidato, uh, yeah, Sprigidato, uh, the fire croc uh, Fue Coco, and the water duckling. Quaxle, Quaxle. I, I need the water duck. Either. You need the water duck. <laughs> I need the water duck. Oh, <laughs> uh, I, I kind of, I want to do either fire or water. I don't know yet. So, um, but yeah, it's, it's. They haven't set a le- release date. Honestly, they, they, they say maybe, maybe aiming late. For, aiming for Christmas season, I think. Yeah, probably like the general Nintendo thing. Like they try to hit that that uh, holiday season. Try to get as many uh, kids, you know ramped up out of uh, ramped up about it so they can bug their parents for it so stuff you have to look forward to uh, mike you know mm-hmm. you know when your kids gonna <laughs> bug you eventually so mm. <laughs> as i say i don't know i don't know you because you have little you have a couple girls right i'm trying to remember i've got two girls and well i've got three now we had a baby oh, right. I, forget, uh, I remember you just yeah i forgot yeah around the same time you did yeah yep. um yeah. and uh it was he's a he he's a boy so two girls <laughs> and, a, and a baby boy Awesome. Yeah. So you, so like you said, maybe your girls would be interested in this at some point. So, because from what I've noticed is like Pokemon games are a little bit more popular with, uh, the, the female gender 
uh, the male gender, actually. It's kind of funny. Uh, my buddy Reese's wife, Serena, is super, super into them. And she will, like, just straight to go around collect them all. And she doesn't even really battle with them. She's just like, I gotta catch them all. And I'm like, you were way more into this. So this is what you have to look forward to if your kids are in as video games as we are. Um, yeah. And you can just say, oh, God, not another one. So <laughs> really fun story about my wife before we move on. It's about Pokemon. So James has maybe heard this before. Um, do you remember, Mike, I don't know if you remember uh, making a connection between movies and video games. Do you remember the first Pokemon movies that ever came out? Oh, yeah. I mean, a bit. Like, vaguely, they're like, I remember them being huge. Like feeling yeah. like things were very large. Yeah, yeah. I didn't know. Did you ever get a chance to go see them at all? I didn't see them in the theaters, but I saw them like on TV, um, like VHS. For yeah. dating us, yeah, that VHS is are these bricks yeah. of tape, children. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't free on streaming, and you couldn't just find it on the internet. Yeah, you actually had to. We had to purchase it. You had to put it in. You had to rewind it, and all this fun stuff. Anyways, the get off my the blockbuster. <laughs> yeah, 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 right. So Perfect. Jackie. Um, and her brother were like super into Pokemon when they were in grade school. And her dad, um, it's like, they're like, dad, dad, take us to go see Pokemon. And you know, James, you know, John, he, mm-hmm. he was like, he doesn't, he doesn't really watch movies. He's very much a, like, I, mm-hmm. I stay busy, like doing all my, my woodworking and all my, you know, plumbing and all stuff. He's very much like work is my, is my pastime. And I'm like, okay, cool for you. Um, definitely from that generation. And he's like, I'm not taking these kids to see Pokemon because he'd seen the cartoon a couple of times when they watched it. He goes, it looks awful. He looks like it <laughs> looks like it's it's bright, mind melting. Um, but unfortunately, like right at the time that like the movie came out, um, my mother-in-law, she had she was going through her cancer treatment at the time and she's like, she couldn't take him. And so she's like, John, you have to take him. And my, my father-in-law was like, mother of God, help me. <laughs> so he's like, fine, let's go. He watched it. He's like, maybe it's not going to be as bad as it was. No, it was actually worse. I remember him vividly <laughs> telling me that it was worse than what he thought it was. He goes, he goes, they just squeaked, and he goes, and, and the people talked to them. He goes, how do they even know what they're saying? <laughs> it was just like you know, John. He's so analytical, James. Like I know, just, like, even as a kid, the plot was a little thin. Oh, we absolutely. Were, we were hyped about it, and we went for the promotional, the promotional uh, Pokemon cards that they were. Yeah, the, the, the gold yeah. Mewtwo and the gold, you know, like you got the Pokeball with the There's gold. There was a special yeah. edition Dragonite card, but yeah, yeah, whatever the heck it was, but yeah, <laughs> I I have no idea what it was. Yeah, but like you said, it's it's it, he was like, I'm not taking them to see another one. I never again. And so and the next one came out like like next year, the the year after that. Well, her 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 mom, their her cancer gun remission, but if it came back, so she had to go through treatment again. And he was like, it was about the same time that second movie came out, and it was just like picture perfect. Like John was like mother of God. It's like <laughs> this is like God hates me. Like this is my punishment. <laughs> like what did I do in my life to deserve this? <laughs> but yeah, he tells that story all the time. And he's just like, I will never. He goes, I don't care. He looked at me the other day and he's like, I don't care how much your kids, if they get into Pokemon, I don't care how much they love Pokemon. I'm not taking them to see a Pokemon movie, <laughs> anything else. Uh, I was, that was the best, like I'd ever, that's the best conversation I'd ever have with him any ever. And I was like, all right, fine. Then it's going to be Dragon Ball Z, which is my wife's other childhood <laughs> thing. And he's like, Oh God, help me. So, but anyways, that's, that's my random tangent why my brain went tonight. So, <laughs> Incredible. So things we have look that people have to look forward to if they have kids, right? Right, Mike? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Just listening to like Frozen in the background on loop for mm-hmm. <laughs> days, it feels like sometimes probably. Oh, but yeah. yeah. Um but yeah, going off the Pokemon tangent, um the final story we have going on before we get sidetracked again, um, is the uh Steam Deck. Mm-hmm. So this is if uh, no one is familiar with Valve, Valve is a company that has been um, mainly a, I guess originally they came out where they were a video game company, like a video game production company, came out with Half-Life. Um, did yeah, they do Counter-Strike? Counter-Strike, Counter-Strike, yeah, they did Counter-Strike. Team um, Fortress 2. Team Just Fortress little, little titles like that. Yeah, yeah. and things little... you people have probably never heard about, mm-hmm. right? Yeah, you know, Mike's probably like, I've never heard of these, so. Uh, Portal 1 and 2, I mean. <laughs> yep. Yeah, little little games, right? Little games. Um, and they, uh, a few years back, probably, what, 15, 12, 15 years ago, they came out with uh, Steam, which is a big, you know, uh, video game uh, 
the store. First really, the first really big unified yeah. video game store online. Yeah, which really pushed that downloadable content or downloadable games onto computers and things like that. So now they've officially entered the portable game deck market. So the first real uh, uh, Switch, Nintendo Switch contender, I guess you would call it. Mm -hmm. um, have you guys got a chance to even see, look at this at all? I have, actually. It's surprisingly powerful in a little package. It, it doesn't compare to a, a modern gaming rig, but... No. They packed a lot of hardware in, and the price is pretty competitive with other consoles. No, oh, absolutely. Uh, Mike, have you? Did you get a chance to look at it at all? Or I mean, I, I haven't held it. Uh, you know, I haven't looked at it close up or anything like that. But I've, um, yeah, I've yeah. been following it. I've, uh, it, I'm, I'm interested in it. I mean, I've seen a, a lot, read a bit about it and stuff. But it seems like a really interesting. I mean, kind of the issue that I feel like I have is that all of the different games and stuff are across different systems and consoles and, like, computer is the best way to go because, you know, PlayStation's porting over a bunch of stuff and, like, Xbox games are almost... A lot of them are going on to the, um, the Xbox capabilities, right, with the, the computer. But, um, like, having... Uh, being able to carry that around and, like, you know, a little little portable device sounds pretty unique. oh yeah no absolutely no absolutely like you're you're hitting the nail on the head it's it's 100 percent. that's the thing that like made the switch you know fly off the shelves is just the portability factor even if it didn't have like super high end graphic games right which they, they tried to do that a little bit like with doom and stuff like that but it just didn't it didn't pass muster uh, comparatively to like you know desktops or even laptops mm -hmm. for that matter but right. With the Steam Deck, it they've got some pretty decent, you know, specs on it. If you guys get a chance, just go over and check it out. Uh, I took a look at it. it's a, it's like a last generation video card. It doesn't. It's yeah. about half as good as like a current generation, like a 3050, 3060. Yeah. But if you like, it's comparable to like a GTX 2050, 2060. So you know what kind of like I know we're kind of getting in the weeds here. You know what kind of like what's the what's the processing power on it, James? Did you see? You have it pulled up right now. Oh, I if not, I'm gonna pull it up I here. I don't remember the teraflops on it. Um, let me just pull it up real quick. But yeah, I, I was really kind of wondering, you know, the price point from what I remember, it, it, it looked like it was, okay, it's got the, it's got a four core, eight thread, AMDs and two CPUs. So that's not bad actually at all. I mean, CPUs um, are pretty small, so that's the same architecture as like a Ryzen. So, I mean. It's yeah. And, and if you get the, the basic little uh like the, th the 400 hundred dollar one you get yeah. 64 gigs 16 gig of ram on it which is plenty oh yeah so it's totally worth the extra like 130 bucks you know to get to the solid state in there so that's the big difference i was noticing so um i know i'm kind of like we're going to get into the hardware and nerdy part <laughs> of our, our podcast anyway, so no times low times no, yeah yeah solid, like, solid state is the way to go yeah absolutely so if you get paid that extra 130 dollars it's a hundred percent like way better like faster load times all that jazz you know yeah, it's, it's even got an elden ring to run on it so yeah well there you go there you go see mike two birds one stone get yourself a steam deck and get elden ring what could it's go wrong, cheaper right? that way in the long term. For the low, low price of like six hundred dollars, you can have another game. Yeah, <laughs> just sell it to your wife and see what she does. You're like, <laughs> yeah, she's like, uh, like she's like, all right, you can keep that, but we're getting divorced. Like, you can keep that. <laughs> Confidence is ninety percent of sales. So if I just say it like I think it's true, that's that'll work. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's perfect, right? That's like this is your business, so you're great. You can go into it. <laughs> It's, it's not just a game; it's a piece of gaming history. It's going to gain value. I can share it with the children, sweetheart. Look at, like, look at the Mario cartridges; they're worth millions of dollars now. Apparently, <laughs> that's right. You know, it's yeah. <laughs> the, nobody, maybe in a few years, nobody will have one of these, and I can sell it for millions of dollars, sweetheart. There you go. <laughs> not at all true, but you know what? It's it's what we tell our wives to get what we want, and it it, it never never fails that we get shot down whenever we have a fifteen point presentation about how we should get it done and oh, it just yeah. never goes that way so. really the more prepared i am for the pitch the more likely she is just to shoot me down because it's like if you spent this hard <laughs> thinking hard about this then it's clearly something i don't want you to have you, you like i said mike you're missing out on something fabulous if you'd ever met his wife she's like she's got him like like 
tack down to a T about like what she could tell he's coming at her. It's good stuff. I, I love watching him and Kelly have their kind of uh, tit for tat because she can see him coming from a mile away. You have no tact, James. What a, I don't have but, any tact. It's fine. <laughs> I don't think you guys have a great points. relationship. It's perfect. It's a great <laughs> relationship, and it's it's phenomenal to watch though because she she knows. So, <laughs> but yeah, but yeah. So guys, if that's something that interests you guys, I know they have the, the base model. Like I said, is at four hundred dollars, and then it just goes from like five thirty, and then I think it's like six fifty from there. But getting the five thirty one, which is perfect for anybody that wants to have that kind of. Um, uh, mobile technology that has some pretty decent computing powder power, excuse me, and doesn't want to have a laptop in their and their and their sitting well, laptop in their lap the whole time and you want to play so but but yeah that's definitely something to look forward to. I have it if, on good uh, authority. You can jailbreak them and put emulators and stuff on them. Too, that so. wouldn't. Su- oh, we did see. I did see somebody do that. Yeah, they've already put Nintendo products on it, and oh, I'm sure. I, I feel like Steam actually did it themselves. Or like, see, look, you can do it if you want to. Like they've just. Everything they've released is like this is just a little handheld computer type thing. Yeah, I mean it, it runs it runs power. a dot ex it runs a dot exe file. So I mean, oh absolutely, I'm sure, yeah, it's, it's, I'm just, sure it's trivially easy to put something on there. Yeah, I, it 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 because it runs. Is it running off of Windows, James? Is it a Windows? I don't uh, know. I would be surprised if it was Windows, but I'm thinking it's Linux. Honestly, just thinking but, about it. But it runs it runs native PC apps. So I mean, no, I absolutely, not, yeah. Not so exactly I. I I am. I would not be surprised at all to see in the in the long run whether or not uh, how much stuff people just just shove on there. Because if you get those solid states on there, it's going to be awful. I'm sure Nintendo's going to have a field day with it. So because Nintendo and emulators that aren't on their wonderful Switch that are actually working are they just lose their minds over. So I'm going to keep. I'm going to go off my soapbox because that's that's my soapbox. So. <laughs> Because I, I definitely went on a tie right the other day about it. So, but yeah, that's you certainly that's, took a stand. I definitely take a stand, and I and my stance is I hate the Nintendo emulators that they put out. So, anyways, <laughs> moving on. <laughs> so, All right, um, Alan, Alan Wake. So, well, real quick before we get into that, is there any other news that anybody else wants to talk about before we we get going? No, no. I'm ready for a cult um, classic video game. A cult classic, a cult classic. Okay, yeah, that's that a, is that's def- a fair description of what Alan. That is a, that is a good description. So that's mm-hmm. so we're finally going to get into the meat of the, the episode, guys. And the real reason that we had Mike on um, while he sat there and just kind of uh, he he he, I was the work for him. Enjoyed he, myself. He, enjoyed myself. You definitely, you definitely enjoyed is. yourself. Yeah. <laughs> just says, wow, these guys are like super nerds. It's like, Ow. what is wrong with them? <laughs> I learned no, something today. These yeah, episodes, absolutely. these episodes, like over the uh, video casting software, always get away from us. It goes a little, <laughs> it goes a little faster in person. But <laughs> yeah, it definitely does. But but no, today, guys, we're going to go into like James said, the cult classic, uh, Alan Wake, which is uh, if you guys are not familiar with this, before we get, we're gonna before we get into a deep dive and kind of our feelings about um, the gameplay and the design and all that stuff. Um, just a brief overview of it. So uh, Alan Wake is an action-adventure game developed by Remedy Entertainment and published by Microsoft Studios, released for the Xbox 360 back in May of 2010, uh, and Microsoft Windows in February of 2012. The story follows best-selling thriller novelist Alan Wake as he tries to uncover the mystery behind his wife's disappearance during a vacation in the small fictional town of Bright Falls, Washington, all while experiencing events from the plot in his latest novel, which he cannot remember writing coming to life so just brief like impressions guys mike what how did you how did you feel about this game when you played it like did you did you enjoy did you love it were you apathetic about it what what, what was your i loved it i loved it i absolutely loved it it was amazing uh it was i've never like i've read books like this or i've seen movies like this but like i've never played a game like this where you're like Trying to work out this, um, I mean, a little bit, but you've got a mystery, you're trying to figure it out, you've got like a lost love, um, and uh, like it's a story that you're writing, and it's it's weird and sort of, uh, it's, you know, Stephen Kingy or uh, what's it called, the Twin Peaks ish. Oh, yeah. Like, got, got a lot of those uh, sort of suspense, horror vibes going on. Um, and the mechanics of the game were, were pretty. Like it wasn't difficult to play, 
Um, but it was uh, it was like fun. Things moved and it wasn't just you know shoot shoot. It was uh, you got the light thing and you got to like burn people with the light. It was fun. I liked it. What about what about you? Did no, you I say had a it was uh, The Shining. What are you talking about, James? No, no. <laughs> I may, I'm, making Stephen, I'm making Stephen. I'm making Stephen. Oh Clark. God, <laughs> not this late, James. Not this late. I can't. I can't keep up with you. You're. You're. I've, you I've the whole off, day. I've been waiting for you to grow, and I've named off like six of his books already. But I'm trying to be good. Okay, I'm ignoring <laughs> your crap, and I, I'm trying to be good. We have company. I'm trying to be good. I don't want to have a squabble in front of him. Okay. He seems to enjoy the squabbling. So. Well, I'm trying to eat my. I'm chair, here to so. be entertained. <laughs> Are you not entertained? I'm so entertained. <laughs> Anyways, all right. I've eaten my cherries. I'm good. So yeah, I, I actually had a blast with it. So I got about halfway through with it because um, I had actually played this whenever it originally was first released. I don't know if you did or not. Um, no, but, yeah. But I actually no, I, 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 I didn't. I um, I so I got control, and we were actually talking about doing control yeah. like during the summer, um, Which, and then we had yeah. children. <laughs> and like things got crazy. Uh, I mean, so, I, like, I tried to talk to my wife about that. And I'm like, can't you just postpone this for a couple months? <laughs> It'd be great. And she an looked at dagger. I'm sure she, she did the same thing your wife would have done is just like daggers, just daggers. <laughs> like, I will stab you so hard. Oh, exactly. Can't we just talk about this next fiscal year? Yeah, really. <laughs> the, budget's oh, a, the, the, budget's, the budget's a little tight this year. So, let's just... yeah, really. Just postpone <laughs> that. Child. Just a month or two. Yeah, it uh, totally works. Oh yeah, and no, but so I, I went back and I had been um, so like I played, I played. I'm kind of going through like a, a remedy um, sort of retrospective or something. So yeah. I finally like played the Max Payne, well Max yeah. Payne one and two, uh, for the first time. Even though those came out like forever ago, um, <laughs> and uh, and Alan Wake as well. It's just like wow, these are these are incredible games. I, I missed them. I was kind of in a dead zone with video games when this came out in 2010 I didn't really start uh coming back to video games until the last few years um so like what's been fun about that is going back and picking up some of that history and the stuff that i miss um so i played controls like holy crap this game is so much fun i gotta see everything else that they've done and there were comparisons <laughs> to alan wake uh and uh, that's why i picked it up i was like i gotta play this game and uh, actually it was a little more fun i think a little tighter a little, a little more, okay. uh, a little more controlled. I don't know. That's 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 yeah. Uh, we shall have we shall have fisticuffs later. Uh, we oh, definitely agree on that okay. point. So. Well, I, this is actually one of the things that was most contentious about the game was it was originally pitched as an open world game. Yes. And the development cycle for this game was really intensely interesting. It's like a Psychonauts level cluster situation. Oh yeah, no, absolutely. <laughs> what happened? What happened? Oh yeah, I don't know if you're familiar. Like Psychonauts is a um, who who is the gentleman that that Tim runs Shaver. that studio? Tim, Tim Schafer. So he he that 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 uh, the first game was Day, just... Day of the Tentacle. I mean, he did a lot of cult classics. Yeah. yeah. So Monkey that the Island, second uh, yeah the, the, the second Island. one they came out with yeah the second Psychonauts that they came out with was just obviously just bogged down in development hell essentially until almost 20 years almost yeah 20 years so and then it just came out <laughs> because microsoft saved it with a little bit of you know funding luckily so that's kind of kind of where alan wake came in kind of similar to that too and i to be fair though mike though there's worse studios that you got you could dig your dig your teeth into than remedy because i i love this studio um I'm a huge fan of theirs. Like I, like you were saying, they have the Max Payne series and they have the Alan Wake series. And on top of that, I feel like they have a very underrated classic or, uh, on their hand, which is Control, honestly. Yeah. yeah. I, I really feel like that is probably their best game that they've ever come out with. But I think just it got overshadowed by so many things that it was kind of just a little too buggy when it yeah. came out. And so mentioning so, Remedy, though, as a studio, it's actually pretty interesting how they've kind of become a storytelling studio. They didn't yeah. start that way because no, they, no, their no. first game they put out was, was Death Rally, which was like a top down like racing yeah. game. And they hired a writer just to fill in the text bubbles for the game. And he was just supposed to, you know, add the instructions for the game, like, you know, how do you move the cars and stuff. But he decided, you know, there's a lot of empty space on this screen, so I'm just going to include a bunch of narrative text about all the different stuff. And it really got them noticed. And this is how they kind of got taken off, like as a narrative studio. 
And so when they went to do Max Payne, they wanted to do something that told more of a story. Mm-hmm. And actually, you may have noticed this since you've just been playing through, is that their narrative has gotten refined because actually their lead developer went to, film, went to film school between, mm-hmm. yeah. between Max Payne and Alan Wake which kind of led to him developing these more elaborate story plots. And I think that's where like the episodic, like almost TV nature of Alan Wake came from. Yeah. That's Sam Lake, right? Sam Lake. Yeah. Is the... Sam Lake, yeah. Okay. yeah. And he is actually worked on, so he worked on Alan Wake James, right? And then he also, didn't he also work on control? He did death rally. He did Max Payne. I think he did Alan Rake. And I, I think he did control as well. Because I definitely have the same vibes from Alan Wake and Control, like the writing style and kind of the way mm-hmm. it, it it plays out. And I, it's I did, same, it's, it's in the same universe too. So, oh, I didn't even know that. Wow, yeah. that there you go. The more, you, the more you know. Apparently, if you're if you're playing Control and you read a lot of the mission documents, it talks about how Alan Wake is like being considered as a director because of his reality altering powers and. Huh talks about you know the nature of his event that happened and yeah it's clearly part of the universe and the control organization has their eye on the situation see i i don't even know because i'm trying to remember if alan wake 2 actually came out yet i'm thinking i think they, no, they, they, just, an, they just announced alan wake 2 okay that's yeah. what I was so thinking, there was alan wake, alan wake and then uh, alan wake remastered. american nightmare which was like uh dlc i, I didn't play that no, one, but it's, it's a it? non-canon kind of like yeah. shoot, wave shooter thing Oh, it was, it was meant. It was built to be like on the Xbox arcade, and it kind of was yeah. made to fill, fit the rest of that genre. Oh, that makes apparently, me sad. apparently it has a story. Apparently it's good, but it's not considered a canon part of the universe, according to the writers, at least. Well, that makes me sad. But I know they definitely dropped the DLC for um, the original Alan Wake game. Two, actually. But two, yeah. So, um, and then they actually just announced the Alan Wake two, yeah. which I'm actually really excited to see what they do with the new with the new game plan because they really evolved like you were saying um, like between like Max Payne which is i mean with for lack of a better word it's just a shooter yeah um, and, and they take that it's a pulpy story too yeah love it's a story and it's like it's weirdly psychedelic too yeah oh yeah <laughs> There's definitely some points in there where you're you're kind of like, oh, what are, what are we tripping on, like hardcore here? Oh yeah, yeah. It, I mean, it's, your, it's your classic revenge story, right? The guy's family gets killed, and he goes off and kills everybody back. I yeah, kind of feels, you know, Punisher esque a little bit. Not not oh. that bad, you know. Right, what's like, the, what's that movie where the guy has like a prostitute that gets killed, and then he goes and murders a whole big city gang or something on her behalf? I can't remember what it was called. Are you talking about Sin City? That might be it. I don't know. Yeah, Dame to Kill for. Yeah, yeah, like yeah. very good <laughs> comic, by the way. <laughs> Frank Miller before he goes crazy. So <laughs> let's, let's point it that way. Because his new stuff, I'm just like, you are off in the left field, man. But God help him. But anyways, um, yeah, that's that's definitely his Dame for, Dame to Kill for because his name's Marv. Yeah. Movie not so great. Book great. Um, but yeah, it's, it definitely has those vibes behind it. And you can kind of see as Remedy goes through uh, like each iteration and all the way up now from Alan Wake and into Control, like you said, they've refined that storytelling and they found out that people like that more, right? You know, they like they like a, a, a thriller and kind of a mystery behind what you're even doing here and not having everything just laid down in front of you like a... I don't know for a lot. What's what's the what's a good example? Like Call of Duty. Okay. Wow. What are we gonna do? We're gonna go. There are the bad guys. The campaign. We gotta go kill the bad guys because the bad guys are bad. So we're gonna go kill them. And it's just like okay. Well, what's the you know? There's nothing to it, right? There's you got no. I've got no hook to try to like you know be empathetic towards my main character. And in this story, like you were saying, Mike Alan Wake is just. It's like you're walking through a Stephen King novel, and it's just. It, it's it's not gorgeous because the graphics are definitely they've they've seen better days, uh, but the game mechanics they totally hold up. It's not overcomplicated. It's very it's, simple. It's Almost very simple. Early. Atmospheric is the word I would use. It's yeah. definitely very atmosphere. It's perfect for it. Um, but do you want to do a little bit of the gameplay? Like, what do you, uh, Mike? Do you want to kind of do tell us a little bit more about the gameplay? Because I know you you talked a little bit about like the flashlight mechanic and the guns. Um, is there yeah. anything that really stood out to you about the gameplay? I'll say, ask you that. 
Oh yeah. Um, I mean, I guess, uh, I, I guess kind of that, like it's simple. You don't have a bunch of different, well, I guess you end up getting a few different guns and stuff, but, um, the, the game is a story game, like more than it yeah. is a, a shooter or anything else or a puzzle game. It's got like shooter elements and puzzle elements in it. Um, but for the most part, what you're doing is you're kind of like going around and you're trying to find this stuff out. You've got a flashlight and this flashlight is what you use. Like you've got to shine the light on the dark creatures in order to like get rid of the darkness. Um, I, I mean, that's about it. I don't know how much there is to say about about you mechanics know, other than that. It's simple. Yeah, yeah uh, no, which is kind of like a breath of fresh air. Yeah, it's it's incredibly simple compared to like some of the, you know, uh games that uh I mean certain people that will remain unnamed that you know are possibly here that have gotten me delved into which are overly complicated and oh, yeah. are crafting like what things. What are you talking about? What? <laughs> Uh, I, I love those games too. Like, I, it's not that I don't like. You games be or... quiet, James. Those are overly <laughs> complicated games sometimes. Anyway, okay, I'm... the the elements of this game remind me a lot of like a Telltale Games game. Yes. Which, to be fair, LMA came out way before Telltale Games got started. But yes, they've got this day night cycle going on where they have like a episodic thing. Like the game takes place in episodes. There's yeah. usually a daytime part where you're like in the city, you're talking to residents, and then there's a nighttime part. And like you were saying. The citizens are like possessed by darkness, and you have to shine your flashlight on them to like break that spell. Mm -hmm. And then you can shoot them with your gun. And there's areas of safety in the game that are light, so light and darkness is one of the big themes. Yeah. And there's a lot of supernatural elements that come from like the author's mind because Alan Wake, the titular character, is an author. And one of the big yeah. plot points is you're like collecting the pages of this book he supposedly wrote while yep. he was passed out or something on a lake house that may or may not exist. <laughs> yeah it, it, it definitely like you said once once you really kind of delve into the story a little bit because i when i replayed this i was like holy crap i'm like there are some striking similar similarities between max Payne, alan wake and control just like you said it's it's, it's all kind of got that underpinning atmosphere uh atmospheric kind of uh What's the word? I'm literally for, forget for that. It's very heavy on the atmospheric uh, elements. It's what they really push for. And I, like yeah, said, and it feels James, like you can't. It, it feels like you can't really trust the narrator as well, or the no. main character yourself, the person that you're playing, which is fascinating. Like you're trying to figure out if you're a good guy um, <laughs> or a yeah. bad guy, which is like I find that really fun. Um, it's like, am I the baddie? Okay. <laughs> yeah. are, are we? It's, it's the sketch there. Are we the baddies? We got skulls <laughs> on our caps. <laughs> but like he holds up a mug and it's a it's a skull. I think we're the baddies. Um, have you ever seen the Mitchell and Webb show? <laughs> That's what I'm saying. Yeah, it's a British comedy duo. They are hysterical. You should watch. Yeah, yeah. On YouTube. I, but, they are. Yeah, it's, uh, it's, but anyway. It's, <laughs> <laughs> though the the development for alan wake is really interesting because they started yeah. right after max Payne released in 2003 oh wow and uh they started working on this new game they wanted it to be very different from max Payne. that they wanted it to be more of a storytelling thing like i said lake went to film school to learn to tell stories better so like we've been talking about he drew inspiration from stephen king David Lynch, Twin Peaks, that sort of thing. Yes. And they set very early on this idea that it was going to be in a town, there were going to be supernatural events, and it was going to be related to a writer. But they actually first announced the game at E3 in 2005, and at that time they had a demo that they used to gain interest. The demo showed a open-world survival gameplay that had this dynamic daylight cycle that went through the map. And that was it. What they were trying to drum up publishers to fund them, what they didn't tell people was that was all they had at that point. <laughs> they they hadn't really nailed down the core gameplay elements. All they had was a town and a day night cycle, and that was yep. it. <laughs> <laughs> they're fi they're almost five years in development of a game that was in development for ten full years, <laughs> and they had nothing. They had absolutely nothing. There was too many cooks in the kitchen, is the way the developers described it later on. And it was at the point where uh, the next thing you heard about Alan Wake was in 2006. The yep. studio released a press release saying that they weren't going to be coming to E3. So everyone thought, well, hey, this cool new game we're all hyped up on, maybe it's just not going to exist. But there was a little blurb at the end of the Microsoft demo where they talked about how um, Alan Wake was going to be a Microsoft game. 
And after that, there was nothing again. They apparently had such organizational and planning issues that they couldn't make decisions about the core gameplay elements. They had all these technical things. They had an engine built, but they hadn't made any decisions about the story or the game itself. Microsoft actually hired in an independent company to come and help them make decisions. They, they brought in a group of independent yeah. managers to sit down and make decisions for the team so the game would keep playing. Well, to be fair, you know... And, you this, is, and this is how yeah. what started as an open-world game ended up being a very linear game. Oh, they, yeah. they, used, they used a lot of that open world in part of their cutscenes. You probably noticed that the cutscenes are all contiguous. They all clearly show the same town. It's almost like they did a flyover of a little mountain town somewhere. Yeah. And the light, the light elements stayed in as the light mechanics on the enemies. What was supposed to be a dynamic daylight cycle got scrapped. But yeah, this the studio was just all kinds of crazy disorganized. I mean, it was well, very, to be fair. To me. I mean, you get, get a... that a lot, right? Go ahead, Mike. Sorry. No, I was just gonna say, didn't Remedy get acquired by Microsoft at some point? Uh, I think they recently uh, did. Maybe Microsoft. Uh, I know Microsoft was their publisher. And I know Microsoft owns the rights to this game for a long time, and Remedy just got back the rights to Alan Wake whenever the remastered version came out. Yeah. I don't know if Microsoft bought them out or not. They've been buying out games like no, studios looks, like crazy for their Xbox Live service. I but. think it looks like they're still pretty much on their long. They they they, Actually, partner... they, they went they went public in 2017, so you can yeah. buy stock in them if you right. want to. Awesome. I have a plan to do that now. <laughs> because, you know, I'm an investor, James, and I can do things like this. Pinky don't South take David. financial... Pinky, don't take yeah, Don't South. take financial advice from, from me. I am not the guy to take advice, financial advice for. Buy GameStop. Hold on to it. Wow. Don't, don't, yeah. be, a smooth, don't be a smooth brain. <laughs> Buy GameStop. Ride the rocket, James. Is that what we're going to do? Straight to the moon. Yeah, <laughs> actually... Flash Gits just released a great video in the last week or two. Don't get me started about them, James. The, it was the, the Elon Musk and uh, Joe Rogan go to yes. the verse. That was great. That was that, that was really good. Fantastic. Jackie, so these guys have a <laughs> grotesque type of humor. It's quite funny. If you get a chance, check them out. It's Flash Gits, like okay. Flash and then G-I-T-Z. Okay. These are not for children. I'm going to point that out right off the bat. So, and if, right. and if, Flash, if Flash gets as funny to you and not horrifying, then you can check out Meat Canyon and you'll be horrified. Jesus, James. You're <laughs> just going to – you just want to ruin everybody's day. I do. I do. I enjoy it. I enjoy the tears of <laughs> His are more nightmarish, nightmare fuel than anything. So, But, yeah, talking about nightmare fuel, that's it's definitely around along those lines. So, But, yeah, I, I thoroughly – thoroughly enjoyed that uh the game mechanics like you were saying james like that they're really kind of heady um because i can't imagine this being a an open world game now that i've played it essentially twice uh could you could you mike really see this being an open world game at all really no no but it makes a dynamic cycle of like going from day to night at all yeah, I mean, it makes sense that it was sort of started as an open world game. I feel like there's still elements of it because at some points the maps are just like way too big for yeah, what's going that's on. That's exactly it. Yeah. yeah. Um, and it was interesting to me that everything you said you loved about the game are the things that they didn't originally plan to do but ended up doing by the end. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, I mean like there is like still that, some that, of that day and night thing. Yeah, yeah, but like the big story emphasis, the fairly linear gameplay, like the episodic, like almost TV like nature of it, like all those are really cool elements. And at the time, they were totally unique. Yeah. Oh, yeah, God. yeah. I just like I just like reading some of this stuff. Like it's it's a, it like you were saying. I, I'm just getting into it. Like I said, too many cooks situations. What they called it. Yeah. Oh, you said they actually brought in outside managers just to make decisions about how the game yeah. was going to go. But you get that a lot with like creatives, right? You know, like they have all these ideas and they have so many things they just want to lay it on there, but they don't have any direction. And everyone serves that function, right? Like everyone Someone has a function. Constraints. Yeah. And I, I totally, I totally understand that. In my new line of work, I hundred percent understand it's, it's, that. It's, it's like dealing with programmers, right? Tell them exactly what you want, and you'll get it. And if you don't tell them what you want, you're going to get what they want, which is not necessarily the same. And ninety percent of the time, all the crap they work <laughs> has nothing to do with each other, and it's all nothing of none of it goes together. And none but of it you know what? It, it looks really cool, but none <laughs> of it goes together. 
It's just, yeah, I have met some interesting people my first week, Mike. I'll, I'll that Sounds oh, fantastic. Yeah. They well, are. and one of the things that I, I feel like they've done a really good job of, despite the fact that they had like a really crazy, uh, impossible like development process with this, is that <laughs> we have an extremely coherent linear story that has like mm-hmm. these underpinnings of, of sort of like, what does it mean? Like questions about like, what does it mean to love someone? And like, what does, uh, what does it mean to be a human or to be a writer? And it's like asking these questions through this, the story process, which I think is like really cool and compelling about the, um, the, like the game, the remedy games that I've played, the max pain games, it's about love and control is about like, Oh gosh, I don't know, a million different things. As well. yeah. Um, <laughs> Well, I guess in a, way, in a way, it could be about love because she's trying to ha- save her brother, right? You yeah, know? it's like so. kind of about family and also yeah. about like working in corporate America and yeah. what does it mean to be human and maybe well, and there's a bunch really, of shit going on. I don't know. And that's the secret to sci-fi and fantasy really is that the more fantastic the setting, the more it's about normal human things. Yeah. It's about family. It's about love. It's about community. And that's what I love about these type of horror games and sci-fi games is it really just draws you back to grounding and back to earth at the end of it. Yep. That's cool. See, that's why I have him on the podcast because he's way smarter than I am. (laughs) (laughs) And he sees this shit. And he's got a... What is it, James? That's chapter three Um, of Orthodoxy by G.K. Chesterton, by the way. Masters (laughs) in bioethics. So there you (laughs) go. See, there you go. That's, That's why he's here. So, like I said... Way that smarter was, than that, me. That was the degree I did for fun. So, <laughs> <laughs> for fun, he's a dickhead. Yeah. What What did you do for not fun? <laughs> Med school. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's amazing. Say, wow. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah. That's definitely that was definitely I've talk, definitely talked to you a couple of times mm-hmm. during nights on med school and mm-hmm. during residency. And you're just like, I want to die, David. <laughs> and I was like, yeah. I can totally understand. That was terrible. I, I don't recommend. Are, are you so? Are you a doctor or? or? Yeah. Oh. yeah. Cool. He's a yeah. Mm-hmm. Stuff you learn, right? So <laughs> good stuff. Awesome. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, so later on, so like you said, like just kind of the themes and everything there. They have all, like I said, just it's just pulling so many things there. I'm reading. They actually pulled a lot of uh, stuff from like Hitchcock too. I don't know if anybody's have really uh, uh, seen any of this, of this stuff. So they actually based a lot of the town off of uh, what's it? Where is it at? Um, uh, the uh, film, The Birds. Yeah, that's what I'm reading. Okay. Okay, and that's also, what I thought. Yeah, yeah, it's for, from the birds, and then also from uh, the uh, episode, the Twilight Zone, uh, the episode Night Springs. Is there an actual oh, okay. episode Night Springs? No, no, they they can be switched in a short episode of the fictional series Night Springs. But play. Oh, okay. I see. I see it now. Okay. They so they kind of they kind of go back and forth, but they also really also heavily go on the the fictional town Bright Falls. Uh, is heavily inspired also by Twin Peaks, um, mm-hmm. which that's that was just a given. I don't know if you got either of you guys have seen Twin Peaks. I've watched, Twin, just, I've watched Twin Peaks. Yeah, it, it, it definitely has it's a very strong Twin Peaks. Vibe. Super weird, and I loved it today. David Lynch is one of my favorite directors <laughs> when it comes to that stuff. Just out there. What like is up with one, the log lady? Like, what is she doing? I don't know, man. <laughs> I don't. <laughs> And like why on my mind there, why is there a red room anyway why is there the weird guy in the suit dancing i mean twin peaks just i, I love that it doesn't make sense but it doesn't really make it it sense. reminds me of <laughs> trying to watch a wes anderson film and i'm like we're like these people took way too many drugs and decided to make something and my brain hurts trying to figure it out <laughs> only only lsd could generate something like that <laughs> At our yeah, some our peyote or something. They somebody went on a vision quest. That's all I know. So. Which actually mentioning vision quest, uh, the men oh, who God. stare, the men who stare at goats. Unironically, one of my favorite movies. I love that. Really, movie. you? Yeah, I never really? thought about you. The men who stare at goats is great. <laughs> yeah, I can I can see that. Yeah, this is that. Yeah, you just baffle me every day, James. <laughs> like I don't know where I had no idea. I should truly, I actually really like that movie too, but probably not as much as you. I'll be honest with you. So. It is a weird George Clooney film, but, but yeah, like you said, like you said, so, um, 
Is there anything else about this game that really kind of stands out to you guys? I know we kind of go all on a wall. wall there wall were here, so. there were two DLCs. If you were, they called them special episodes. Yeah. I don't want to say the plot too much because it kind of ruins the plot of the whole game if you haven't played yeah. it. But they are kind of following the plot of the main game, and they're really setting up for what's probably where the sequel is going to pick up on my guess. I would hope so. So they did. They did do. They both deal with him being in the location that he is at at the end of the first game. Which I believe they've those, included those were, it. They they included both of them in the, in the remastered version. I, I believe. believe they did include it in the remastered. And I don't think the remastered version is on um, Game Pass right now. Is it, James? Do you know? Uh, no. It, it went off recently. I was gonna. Okay. That was the reason I didn't sit down to play it. Was it went off the the Game Pass right before I got to it? Okay. But, so I know yeah. we skipped. Go ahead, James. I was going to say, the release of the game was kind of screwed up. Like, originally it was supposed to come out like on Xbox and PC, I think even some other consoles, but Microsoft yeah. made it a 360 exclusive. Yeah. Well, luckily now they have that kind of a, a semi-port over to PC, I guess, after a little while. They do. And actually, it's interesting. The reason I brought up the change in stuff was the sales really um, were interesting. The original sales on the Xbox did not do very good, actually. By December 2011, they'd only sold 330,000 units, which for a you know mid 2000s game was not very good. Nope. But uh, in by 2012, whenever it went out onto PC, it got much much more copy, and they sold two million. And actually, by 2013, they'd sold three million. The PC sales far far exceeded the Xbox sales by a landslide. <laughs> Uh, fun fact, James. Did you know that uh, Alan Awake was the second most illegally copied Xbox 360 game of 2010 <laughs> with more than 1.1 million downloads? I had no idea. Well, that might be why they didn't sell very many then, isn't it? There you go. <laughs> there we go. The more you learn. That's, that, that is right. So, But luckily, um, they, they, they did sell quite a few in the long, like you said. In the long run, and even with the remastered version, the DLCs and the new one coming out, it's kind of made it a little bit of a resurgence. So, I, I'm 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 excited to see what the new one is, uh, what its new one the new one is like. Mike, was there anything else you that you you kind of wanted to add to that that you think we missed possibly? Uh, what you felt when made this an outstanding game at all? No, I mean, um, I think that I think all the things that we said really uh, really hit what what i thought about it um yeah it was it was fun it was like it's not i mean this isn't like a, the greatest game ever made by yeah by means, but no. it's definitely like um like i said if, maybe it was just like for me with the games that i've been playing i playing like i don't know i played like the outer worlds for a while and like all this other like these big games with big stories and stuff um it was fun to just have like this really linear thing that uh that told this broader story i really enjoyed it yeah, I, I definitely kind of fall in that same boat a little bit too. Like every once in a while, I kind of have to come in and kind of narrow my scope a little bit. And I like playing, I don't, I don't know how you feel about this, James, but I know I like playing the Telltale games every once in a while to kind of bring in my scope a little bit and just kind of say, hey, everything's kind of done for me, except for I have to click a button and every once in a while and enjoy the story a little bit and like the ride. You know, just depending on what kind of genre you like, you know, you can you can pick what you want. So those are Kelly's favorite video games. I usually just watch along when she plays those because I don't want to take that away from her. <laughs> That's what yeah. she likes. Completely understandable. Did has she played the uh, the Wolf Among Us ones, James? I don't think she has. I oh, I know we played the first so episode good. when it was on Xbox Games with Gold, like way way back in the day. I'll have at, to let at her. The time, at the time, we were really poor and we could not afford the second one, so we probably need to go back and do that at some point. <laughs> I think so. It's based on a comic series by Bill Willingham. It's called Fables. It is phenomenal. The first episode I loved. It was great. I so I will have to let you borrow. I think I have a almost a complete run of that series. Nice. So I, I will have to let you borrow it, and I'll have to dig in my file cabinet somewhere for it. So <laughs> things that I have not looked at in years that for some reason I still own and I don't know why. So, but, uh, but yeah, that's, that is roughly guys, our, our, our review of Alan awake. So before we get out of this, uh, this dark nightmare landscape, how many flashlights out of 10 do you guys use? <laughs> give this, uh, Mike, how many, how many flashlights do you give this? 
I give this uh, I give this ten big hefty flashlights out of ten. Big three, like three uh, Duracell, like D battery, battery flashlights. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> James, what do you give it out of flat out of ten? Um, I love the atmosphere. I love the story of it. The simpler, kind of very linear gameplay is not really my thing. I would give it like a six or a seven. Like it's a good okay. game, but it's not it's not in genre for me. So yeah, I, I kind of I'm a little bit closer to James than I am Mike on this one. I would give it probably like a 7.75 it's almost to an eight for me just because i love the atmosphere and i'm a huge fan of stephen king so i love that kind of stuff and james i got all your references this this podcast i ignored like 90 percent of them <laughs> until i couldn't deal with it anymore so i tried so yeah i was good until the very end i didn't want to have a spat in front of company so um but yeah other than that uh i mean is there anything else you guys want to talk about, Alan Wake, or anything else that you guys need to want to throw into the podcast before we skedaddle out of here? James? Mike? Nah, all right. I think we covered yeah, everything. We kind of beat that horse to death. So, <laughs> all right, guys. Like I said, I want to say thanks to Mike uh, from Not Your Father's Movies podcast uh, from joining us again. Um, like I said, we've we've got them. We've got we've collected all three. Hopefully, uh, we can have them all. All if whatever happens, I'm gonna try we and get you all three of you guys on at once. Yeah, I'm gonna try and get yeah, you guys can. all all together at once. I'm gonna collect them all. Um, Wait, so which one? Which one of us is the grass? Which one is water? Which one is fire? Is oh, right? um, Vito is definitely fire. I mean, I, tell me if I'm wrong there. <laughs> you, you remind me of water. I'm gonna say yes. Water. Oh, thank God. Yeah, he's the water Not guy. Grass. Okay. Yeah, Jesse's definitely the Bulbasaur. So, <laughs> <laughs> so he is there useful and he will survive forever. <laughs> he may not have the strongest attacks, but he will survive forever. So Love that's it. all that matters. He will he will leech your it. life. Um, that's a great move, by the way. Anyways, so but yeah, hopefully you guys, like I said, um, go check out their other podcasts as well. Uh, check out some of the episodes that I was on with them as well, and check out their back catalog. Like I said, guys, they have a, a ton of stuff. Uh, to, to see um, and uh, uh, if they want to get a hold of you Mike where can they yeah. get a hold of you guys yeah we are on um, all the social medias we're on Facebook we're on uh, Twitter at NYF movies I think and we're on Instagram not your father's movies um, we are you can email us at not your father's movies at gmail.com and uh, uh, yeah I think that's all the ways you get us like carrier pigeon or something like that as well i don't no. know it seems like yeah. there's a million ways to... Smoke african you have to figure out if it's african or european depending yeah. on the parcel <laughs> how heavy it is so well that's yeah go watch monty python kids it'll it'll change your lives um <laughs> probably for the yeah. worse but uh <laughs> but yeah uh like i said thanks guys, so much check... for having me on it, it this absolutely great man finally be yeah. here and I'm glad you can't. You guys got a chance to come over. I know uh, our time zone thing is it's really hard to kind of get everything squared away, but I'm glad we finally got it worked out. Like I said, hopefully we can get you back on uh, for a control episode because I would love to pick your brain on control because I, I that was probably one of my best uh, favorite games of last year when I had time to play. So oh yeah, yeah and that'd be fun. Maybe we can, maybe we can get Vito to play and he can come uh, talk with us a little bit too. So yeah, that'd be, that'd be a blast. That would be fun. So I'm sure he's got strong opinions about that. So <laughs> like he does with most things, which is a good thing. So <laughs> it's always good to have those guys in there. But um, again, guys, I just want to say thanks for everybody coming on and uh, listening. Um, we're going to go and get out of here. James, thanks for uh, coming in, in as well and providing your uh, ethical opinion, as it were. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna. Hey, I'm gonna throw my dad joke, even though it's not as good as yours. Okay, we're gonna leave it there. <laughs> yeah, thanks for the thanks for the, for the faces that nobody can see. If I'm still gonna call you out, so I gotta maintain anyway. the decorum. So, <laughs> yeah, absolutely, guys. So again, um, guys, wow, this exit, this ex, this exit is going to be so long, it's not even funny. <laughs> just just play the Looney Tunes clip. Out. It's all <laughs> and, we're, and we're done. Okay, done. <laughs> we're done. All right, guys. Everyone have a wonderful evening. We'll see you guys next month. All right, guys. Bye. If you're interested in keeping up to date with new episodes on our channel, add us on any of your favorite podcasting apps or subscribe to our YouTube channel at Seriously Pointless Conversations. 
If you have questions or concerns, please email us at seriouslypointlessconvo at gmail.com. We appreciate any feedback. Thank you for listening to our show.